community had their own place in Krakow, the Jewish quarter, and as the Nazis moved them out into the ghetto, uh, there's a particular route, and I, I walked it this summer. So Jane is now going to play on the clarinet this particular theme, which I've set to clarinet because I think that gets the klezmer feel, but also there's a kind of dark brooding quality to it. So over to you, Jane. <coughs> Here. 
No. Caterers in the house? Yeah. You are there. Okay, yes. fine. This song is, uh, it was in Anna's interview, she told me about um, this particular song, and it's the, the last Sunday. Tango was very big in Poland in the 30s, and this song would be sung before people were setting off um, to war. It's actually a love song between two people saying, you found somebody else and you're going to leave, but, you know, can I have this last Sunday with you? And um, it, it, it became so famous, actually, that the Russians then decided it was theirs. So there's been this interesting thing about whose song is it. Um, and then, uh, on a slightly less cheerful note, I mean, it's not cheerful at all, because the other thing is, when, when people are forced to move, and I'm talking to people who have moved, very often the relationships have to end because so many families are split up by the process of um, exile or refugees or you know um, whatever the mi migration is for it means that relationships break up so that was enough we thought and then I was just trying to find some music online and I did some more research and a really cruel thing that happened with this song is that there were a lot of um, Polish people in the camps in the concentration camps as well as Jews, as well as gypsies, as well as gay people, we know about this. But one of the cruelest things is that the Nazis used to play this song over the uh, loudspeakers as the various people were taken to the gas chambers. So that's sadism for you. Here we go. Let's forget that and tango. <laughs>
was the music teacher at Our Ladies for some time. There's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that thought with you. Now, we are nearly at the place where we move into, um, remember the lovely Portuguese song at the beginning? La da di, la da da, la da da, that thing. The root for the word fado and the root for the word sevdalinka is the same thing. It comes from the word melancholy. And Sevdalinka is the music that crosses the Balkans. This is the music that whether you're Croatian or Serbian, Montenegro, all of the former Yugoslavian uh, countries would hear Sevdalinka. The problem now is where does it belong and whose is it? And there's a fascinating young artist whose name I can't find, so I'm not going to bother. Um, but she insists that music knows no boundaries. And that music may well have been heard in any of those countries, and so she insists on playing it as Sevdalinka, regardless of where it's from. So some of the pieces uh, that you hear in this come from, come from there. Now, one of them is in a, a very unusual time signature. So at this point, the project manager, did you know she's a flautist? There you go. Wouldn't it? And there are so many fantastic classical musicians in Corby, nobody knows about them. There's loads of music teachers. We should form a, a, a music teacher's club or something. We should. Anyway, um, you may you also know. see behind the piano, hopefully, Mahesh, because um, this is a tune that we will hear. Judy, could you give us the stand back and tune? Now that, where would you think that was from? <clears throat> I know I've told you, but if you hear it, does it take you to a place in your head? Um, I couldn't work out what the rhythm was until I looked at the video and they were doing this. She tried to get me to do this in here. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can see what I'm doing, I'm doing one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. And anybody that can add up, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, that's seven. Most music that we used to hear is in fours and eights and twos, but actually this is So we got Mahesh in because it occurred to me that the way to give an orchestral piece back its ethnic roots is to bung in instruments from all over the world that tell you instantly where they're from. So let's hear a bit of the tabla. If you hear that, you know where you are. <laughs> yeah? Would you agree? So I decided that I would put um, percussion from different places back into the piece. When I talked to Paul Helium from Rutland Symphonia, who's interested in actually um, having this piece performed by them, he said, you can't publish this, Paula, and then expect orchestras to find a tabla player. So I thought, and when I publish it, I'm just going to put a list at the back saying, give Mahesh a ring. <laughs> and if you want Latin, give Elio a ring. And if you want Irish, give Clive a ring, because we've got to hear from him yet. You know, they're out there. Orchestra lists might not have a spare, you know, tabla play, but we've got them here in Corby. So let's see what happens when we put those two together. <clears throat>
I've done that stupid thing and put my glasses down. Can <laughs> 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 you see what I did? <laughs> glasses, glasses, where have I put my glasses anyway? Let's do it now. All right then. So, are we. Sorry? Middle case. Middle case. Thank you, fine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, we then went to Portugal. The next piece you'll hear in the prelude is Portugal. And again, what do we think of with Portuguese sound? We've ended up with castanets and tambourine. And um, we finish with an Irish tune. Uh, so, how many of you know what this is? Where is he? Okay. <laughs> Where is he? Parker, can you come down? Yeah. <laughs> that was I, it. Get, I get a tune in my head. Oh, you've played it. Have I? Yeah, he, he had two minutes notice. Time to up. Sorry, sweetheart. Yeah, two minutes notice. Anyway, it goes like this. Dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum Jamaica and such like, and they arrived on the Windrush, and there's these fantastic faces of expectation getting off that ship, coming to the motherland. Here we are, we're bringing our labour here, and what did we get? No blacks, no dogs, no Irish, okay? So what's that got to do with tonight? Camilla was on the Windrush when it blew up, as a baby. So she might not have been here tonight if it had not been for the uh, in, ensuing the safety operations. The boats went down the wrong way, so they couldn't use the lifeboats. Her father has to swim uh, to safety, and she survived as a baby, and she's here tonight. I think that's a great story. Sorry. Prelude, <laughs> um, the recorded piece, the samba, the weird quirk. Remember the curses, the horns, those weird sounds. Then the battle in the mines, followed by the Wolf and the Zerka, finishing off with the um, Estonian Welsh thing over there. So ladies and gentlemen, let us begin. And here we have the Sounds of Home Suite. <laughs>
I think you've just composed the next finest film score to probably equal Schindler's List or Gladiator or Out of Africa. They're movies from my time. You've captured everything from the 20th century and it makes me wonder why 15 years into the 21st we've still got it so wrong. I can't believe what you've written. It's probably the finest piece that I've heard and I mean that. You know my love of music and you know our musical heritage and upbringing. I think you've written the anthem of the Balkans and anybody caught up in that crisis should be very, very proud. Simply superb. The second part was brilliant. I, I really loved it. Uh, and because I'm Polish, uh, there were some Polish references there. And there was Chopin, there was, there was Last uh, Sunday Tango, a uh, Polish song. And uh, I just loved the, the whole experience. And I think uh, the composition was great and everything just came together brilliantly. And this is what she trained for and over the years with all the community things have been brilliant but this is the Paula that we grew up with and it's just amazing. That's, that's it. That's it. I thought it was um, really beautifully textured and well thought out and um, I was lucky enough to be part of the process because Meriden was recording Paula and hearing it on the software, and Sibelius software and then hearing it, all, despite it being in a recording it, it was, yeah, it was just beautiful to see the progression and um, I think she's done a wonderful job and she's done Corby proud. I think tonight went really, really well. I think Paula should be incredibly proud of what she's done. The idea of Sounds of Home to take people's memories of their Sounds of Home and create a completely new work is absolutely wonderful. And I think Paula's done a wonderful job in creating that Sounds of Home from the people of Corby who live around us. So all credit to her. And I really hope that we can get the funding for her to take it on to the next stage. <laughs> and I would love to say thank you so much, Paula. Thank you so much for you being you and for your fantastic imagination with music, for your love for music, for your love for people, for your doing for Corby, and not just for Corby, for people who live in Corby, but they are from other countries and from other sides. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. And thank you very much again.